Finding a photo editing laptop in 2020 can be a challenge. So in this video, I've put together a list of some of my top picks as well as explain why I picked these laptops to help you make the best buying decision for your photo editing laptop in 2020. Let's get rocking. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. Also, if you're curious about the exact pricing of any of these laptops as we're going through the video, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase of that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Jumping right into the video, what to expect. So these laptops are going to be priced from lowest to highest. The specs and thoughts on each model are going to be listed as we go through the video. I'll be answering the most common questions about why you should pick certain Photoshop laptops or photo editing laptops, as we say. And all of this is made possible through your feedback. So if you have any questions, any concerns, any thoughts, uh, if you want me to like take a look at a model that you're considering, definitely comment that below and I'd love to give you feedback there. I'm as active as humanly possible in the comment section. Uh, and do note that, like I said, commissions are earned through the affiliate links. So if you do make a purchase, of course, I'm super grateful when you all do that and it will give me a commission, but at no extra cost to you. All right, so jumping into the first laptop, this is the Asus VivoBook Thin 15. This laptop is estimated at around $485. The reason I say estimated is prices are always changing. So, uh, you know, if you click on this and it's now $600, I do apologize at the filming of this video, it was 485. And that's why all of the laptops on this lineup will say estimated price may vary. Um, this comes with two cores and four threads. So this is definitely an entry level laptop for Photoshop. It is the i3. 1005G1. It has a 1.2 base clock and a 3.4 turbo clock with an Intel Ultra HD graphics, 8 gigs of GDR4 memory, and 128 gig solid state hard drive with a color accuracy of 54% sRGB and 40% Adobe RGB at a 15.6 inch full HD display. This, my folks, is a entry level Photoshop laptop. This is not gonna have amazing performance for multitasking with different programs, let's say like InDesign and Illustrator all at the same time. If you're somebody who does that, this is gonna be for the bare bones Photoshop editor. Somebody who's just getting into it, doesn't need a ton of power yet, um, isn't shooting like massive files. Um, so this is one I recommend for somebody who's like just getting started. Next up is the Acer Aspire Slim 5. This laptop is coming in at around $449. Again, this is another entry level computer with the i3 10110U. Um, this one has four gigs of RAM. You can definitely get away with four gigs of RAM for Photoshop, though I recommend eight gigs as the minimum as it'll give you better multitasking, just better performance in the program as a whole. It has 128 gig solid state drive, 15.6 inch, full HD display, and 65% sRGB with a 47% Adobe RGB. So this is a slight upgrade as far as the processor is concerned, um, but you're getting a little bit less RAM here with this laptop. Next up is one of the best uh, lower priced laptops. I know it's all the way up to $679 already, um, but this is one of the lower priced laptops. This is the Lenovo V14. This comes with a really, really powerful processor for this price point. This is the Ryzen 5 4500U. Um, this processor can even handle some 1080p video editing um, pretty, pretty well. I've done a review on a laptop with this processor and I was impressed by it. So it says 2.3 gigahertz on the base clock and 4.0 on the turbo clock. It says six cores and six threads. So it makes for a good uh, and, and even kind of a great, for the price point, multitasking laptop. It says 12 gigs of RAM, one, one terabyte of hard disk drive storage, a 14 inch full HD display um, with 50% sRGB and 40% Adobe RGB. Now, I'm going to make a statement here because I forgot to say this earlier. A lot of you are going to say, these are Photoshop laptops. Look how horrible that color accuracy. What is wrong with you for recommending such an in-color accurate laptop? Well, the problem is most vendors save money by putting a lower quality. And I don't mean like if you bump it up against your, you know, your desk, it's going to shatter. I just mean what is internal in the screen. So they'll put a lower quality screen in the laptop so they can save some money, and so you can save some money. But the problem is, as creators, we're looking for that color accuracy. So what you'll see is, as we move up the pricing scale, we're gonna find that better color accuracy. And we're gonna talk about why I would personally purchase a more expensive laptop versus a you know cheaper, more affordable laptop as we move forward in this video. But I wanted to get that out there because I know a lot of you are gonna say, I need a color accurate laptop. I agree, you do, and unfortunately, 
there's not really that many well-priced laptops with great color accuracy. But we're gonna work into it and we're gonna find you a couple, um, but it's not, not always the prettiest site when we're doing this. Okay, so the next up is the Lenovo IdeaPad S340. This laptop comes with the i7-1065G7. This has a 1.5 gigahertz base clock and a 3.5 gigahertz turbo clock. This is the Intel Iris Plus G7 graphics, 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM, 256 gigs of solid state hard drive with a 15.6 inch full HD display with a 58% sRGB and 37% Adobe RGB. Now this laptop has a great processor with four cores and eight threads. It can also handle some video editing. I know I'm mentioning that, but in case you're going to be doing video editing as well, this could be a great pick um, for you. Next up is the HP NVX 360. This laptop comes with the Ryzen 5 4500U, 2.3 gigahertz on the base clock, 4.0 on the turbo. And this has the eight gigs of DDR4 RAM, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and a 15 inch full HD display. The color gamut range of 91% sRGB and 59% Adobe RGB. This is gonna be one of the more color accurate models below $1,000. I want to take a quick second to recognize Dwani, and I hope I'm saying your name correctly, a big fan of the channel, and today at the posting of this video is September 7th, which is her birthday, so happy birthday Dwani, I hope you have a blessed day, and thank you so much for supporting my channel. Now before we move out of the you know more semi-budget friendly laptops, I want you to look at the Acer Swift 3. This laptop comes in at $673, it has the AMD Ryzen 7 4700U, it has 8 cores and 8 threads. 2.0 gigahertz on the base clock, 4.10 on the turbo, has 8 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, a 14 inch display, and next up we have the HP 14 laptop. This is another great buy with color accuracy. As you see, as we're moving up in the price point, we're finding that color accuracy. That $673 Swift 3 um, is a great buy though for, for getting down into the six and $700 price point. But this one is $859 estimated price has the i7 1065 G7 with a 1.3 base clock, four cores, eight threads, and a turbo clock of 3.91. Integrated uh, Iris Plus G7 graphics, 12 gigs of RAM. That's great. We're getting up into some higher RAM there, give you better multitasking. And this is the 98% sRGB and 63% Adobe RGB. The MSI Modern 15. This is one of my favorite laptops at this price point. I really like what MSI is doing with their Creator Series. This is the Modern 15. It has four cores and eight threads inside of the Intel i7 105010U. It has a 2.0 gigahertz base clock and a 4.3 turbo clock with the NVIDIA GeForce MX330 integrated, semi-integrated graphics. Uh, and it has an eight gig DDR4 memory, which you can upgrade to 16 um, and even beyond that, but you can just throw in an extra eight gig stick there and be up to 16 gigs. And you have a color gamut range of 99% sRGB and 60% Adobe RGB. So this is another top pick for me. So if you're asking me what are my top picks so far, I'm going to say the Swift 3 and the MSI Modern 15. Those are going to be great picks. If you're enjoying this video and getting some value, gently press down on that like button and let me know how you plan on using this laptop or either of these laptops by dropping a comment below. If you want more content like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Okay, let's get back into the video. All right, next up is the Acer Spin 5. This has the latest i7 1065G7, has a base clock of 1.3, a turbo clock of 3.9, four cores, eight threads, integrated Intel Iris Plus Graphics G7, 16 gigs of RAM, 13.4 inch full HD three by two screen. This screen is spacious. I've done a full review on this laptop. If you want to check it out, um, I'll link it up in the YouTube cards above. And this one has 100% sRGB and 79% Adobe RGB. So moving up to the past $1,000 price point, this is a great pick. I really like this laptop. Next up is the Microsoft Surface Laptop 3 a great competitor of the Acer Spin 5. This has the Ryzen 5 3580U, four cores and eight threads. So this is pretty comparable with the i7 1065G7, but as you see it has a slightly faster base clock. Comes with the AMD Radeon Vega 9 graphics, eight gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and a color gamut range of 97% sRGB and 72% Adobe RGB. So great pick. I have a lot of people ask me about this laptop. Yes, it does make a good to great photo editing laptop. 
the Asus Zephyrus G14. This is a gaming laptop, but the reason it's made my list is because they've equipped it with 91% sRGB and 60% Adobe RGB. So for the price point and for the performance, which we're going to talk about in just a second, this is a great laptop. This is a 4K editing laptop, in my opinion. And that it's at this price point really blows my mind. So this is the Ryzen 7 4800H, 2.9 base, 8 cores, 16 threads, 4.2 turbo, GTX 1650 dedicated graphics card, 12 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, 14 inch full HD display. This, guys, it's a great laptop. And the reason I'm geeking out on it is the price, the price and the specs it's equipped with. Now, it is all aluminum, so top cover, keyboard deck, bottom cover. Um, however, I will have a complaint about the keyboard deck. It's a little uh, spotty on the lighting. It just doesn't light super well. It's my only complaint on this laptop, and you can watch my full review on it if you're interested over on my channel. Um, but yeah, this is a really great laptop because not only can you do photo editing, but you can get into some video editing no problem. Next up is the MSI Prestige 15 Full HD. This is a roughly $1,400 laptop. This has six cores and 12 threads, has the Core i7-10710U, base clock of 1.1, turbo clock of 4.7, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Max-Q, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and a 15.6 inch Full HD display at 100% sRGB and 78% Adobe RGB. So at this point, now we're getting to those higher end, more color accurate laptops that are really showing some great specs and performance. Next up is the Concept D3 Pro. One thing I'll say about this laptop is it is coming soon. Acer has really been pushing hard for their creator laptops, um, but they have not always been the most widely available for purchase. I'm anticipating this is gonna have an i7-10750H, it's gonna have an NVIDIA Quadro GPU, and it's gonna come with 16 gigs of RAM, and the color gamut range is gonna be phenomenal at 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB. I'm also anticipating the price being somewhere in the I mean, this is a wide range, forgive me, but somewhere in the $1,800 to $2,200 price point um, for this laptop. This is definitely a more higher end budget laptop, um, but a great laptop nonetheless. And you can check in the description below um, if it's available now or if it's coming available in the future. Next up on the list is the Gigabyte Aero 15. This is one of my favorite laptops to recommend. It has wonderful color accuracy, phenomenal performance um, in the processor and the GPU great amount of memory, and at a really solid price point. At around $1,700, this is a great pick for photo editing, for video editing, um, for any creator looking to expand. Um, this will not bottleneck you. You will be able to grow with this laptop. Next up is the Dell XPS 15. I'm a big fan of the Dell. I've owned one for over four years now. It's been great. Um, they've recently redesigned it with a larger trackpad. Uh, it's a thinner uh, build chassis, and it has a Great build, I love it. I like the soft touch material, the carbon fiber. It's an all aluminum bottom cover, side panels, and top cover. Um, so I can't really say enough good things about this laptop. The only negative thing I say about this laptop is on my model, I recently replaced the battery because the battery in the old models would swell. And what it would do is it would bump up your trackpad and it would cause you to literally not even be able to click your trackpad. This new model, I've heard good things. I've heard that the trackpad and the battery are not having that issue, but I cannot make any personal promises because I don't have experience with it for the long run. Next up is the, oh, well, the specs, of course. You get the 10750H i7 processor, a GTX 1650 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM, and 100% sRGB as well as 100% Adobe RGB. So like I said, great performance all inside of a 4K 16 by 10 display. Next up is the MSI Prestige 15 4K. So this is the same laptop I reviewed earlier, the MSI Prestige 15. So this is the 4K model. What the 4K model gives you is 32 gigs of RAM at the base, a 4K screen, and 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB. Everything else is the same, and you gain about a $400 price tag. And the Apple MacBook Pro, I know you guys were wondering, is he going to talk about the MacBook Pro? Of course, it is a great laptop. Um, there's no getting around the MacBook Pro. It is a i7-9750H processor in the current model. It has a 2.6 base clock, 6 cores, 12 threads, 4.05 turbo clock, an AMD Radeon Pro 5300M. That's a 4 gig of um, VRAM in that GPU. If you want to use this one, this laptop for like motion graphics or maybe some more intense video editing, I would upgrade this to, I think it's the 5500 
That gives you six gigs of VRAM. Uh, but this comes with 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and a 16 inch Full HD Retina display at 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB. So that is my laptop lineup. Now I'm going to be answering your questions. Okay, so these are the questions that I've seen most common in my comment section. So like I said, please go through these questions. If I don't answer yours, comment below. I want to answer it. I can respond to you in the comment section. First and foremost, what makes a good Photoshop laptop? Secondly, should I pick laptop X? Thirdly, what you gain by spending more money and does it matter? And the reasons I would personally spend more money on a laptop. Right off the bat, CPU. Not all CPUs are created equally. Okay, so that means that, for instance, the Microsoft Surface Laptop versus the Asus VivoBook i5, okay? So right off the bat, let's take a look at these laptops. This one's $1,300. This one's, four, this one's $485. This one has an i7-8650U. This one has an Intel i3-1005G1. Right off the bat, if you didn't really dive deep into these two processors and do your reviews, go to some program like userbenchmark.com, which people say, they complain all the time, they say it's not it's not 100% accurate, blah, 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 but it still is a good benchmark. It still gets you in the ballpark of one processor versus another, okay? So I still recommend it even though there's a lot of super techie people that are like, it's not good enough. Well, like, that's okay. I still recommend it, but I still recommend it even though there's a lot of techie people that are like, it's not good enough. Well, it still gets you in the ballpark. It's still better than nothing in my opinion. Okay, so what we look see here is an i7 versus an i3. If you go and you run the numbers, this i3 is actually faster. Okay, and so the better value between these two laptops, if you're going to get a Microsoft Surface Laptop number two with an i7-8650U versus a VivoBook i15 uh, with an i3-1005G1, this laptop's going to be slightly faster, going to be, excuse me, not slightly faster. This laptop's going to perform at the exact same level, spec for spec, but it's $1,000 cheaper. Okay, so those are some things you have to consider. Would I recommend this laptop for a you know advanced Photoshop user? No, I would not. I would not. I do not think you should buy this laptop if you're somebody who's advanced in Photoshop, trying to run multitasking. But I'm just talking price for price, what you should buy. And price for price, this is a better value. Now, there's a bunch of great laptops at this price point that I recommend buying. Something like the MSI Prestige 15. It'll blow the pants off of this laptop. But make sure you're comparing apples to apples when, you, when you're when you looking at laptops to purchase. You're not just looking at the price and thinking, oh, what's what? Okay, anyway, continue. Is GPU important? No, GPU is not important for Photoshop and photo editing. GPU is important for video editing. GPU is important if you have an external monitor and you're trying to push, push 4K display up to that external monitor. You're going to want a GPU. Those are the things that GPU are important for. I know people get so confused about graphics processing unit. Literally, the more common name that I'm, I'm familiarizing myself with more and more is video card. I think it really should be taking on that name more than graphics processing unit because it really confuses designers. Um, and no, graphic designers don't need GPUs. Photo editors don't really need GPUs. Um, so let's just sum that one up simply there. The RAM, eight gigs totally works. Eight gigs is my recommended benchmark. 16 gigs is best, four gigs you can get away with. That's how I look at RAM. Storage, solid state hard drive versus hard disk drive. Going for the solid state hard drive, it has no moving parts. It's gonna be more durable, more reliable. It's gonna load, read, write, export, save faster versus the hard disk drive. All right, and lastly up on the list, what you're going to gain by spending more money. Color accuracy, build materials, thin and light, battery life. That is why I would spend more money. I would spend more money to get more color accuracy and better battery life. Otherwise, the laptops I've recommended in this video are great laptops for Photoshop. If you want more videos like this, you can click or tap the screen over here, and you can even get a recommended video by YouTube for you over here. I'm Benji Kaiser. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Keep creating, keep designing, keep editing, and I'll see you here in the next video.